Hello YouTube! I am Pinstar, and this is Lethys Path of Progress First Impressions Episode 2. So when we last left our burgeoning city of, um, you know, I don't actually remember what the city is called. I did not get to name it, unfortunately. Um, I bet you you can name it when you play Sandbox City. Oh yeah, we can't access the those details until we build something else. Actually, let's uh, let's do that something else first. So you can see here uh, we have um, uh, our money here. The uh, I think they call the currency in game Florian Florins. Um, uh, but um, right now we've just been spending, and we currently have no no income, nothing, nothing coming to us. So eventually we're gonna go broke, uh, building all these buildings, supplying all this stuff. I mean we're not paying wages. Uh, so that's a good thing, but we still have to build stuff. Um, so there's a couple of things that you need to do, uh, to, a couple of ways to gain money in this. Right now, we only have one option to us, um, just for the moment, although I'm going to show you the second option before this uh, the first impression is through, and that is uh, taxing people. So all these people, we're giving them all this stuff essentially for free, um, but the way we make up for that is we tax them on on the quality of their lifestyle. So the bigger and better their house, the more money we get from them in taxes. But we actually have to physically tax them. Now we can't just click a button and say, okay, I set the tax rate to X percentage. No, 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 no. Not in a Walker style game. We actually have to have somebody go out and tax the people. Now, in order to do that, we need to build a tax collector. So, just like a service building, we're going to build it right here. Now, you need a town hall to store the collected taxes. Yes, you can't actually store the money till you have yourself a town hall. And you can only build one of them, so let's build one of them, shall we? Uh, town hall is... that's town hall. There we go. Now, town hall raises the quality of the surroundings, so you want to build it near the people, but not... Uh, not like right on their faces. Uh, so I'm going to build it like right here. Actually, what I could do... Actually, that's, that fits that fits extremely snugly right there. Wow. I, well, actually, I want to save that area that, that, uh, that for... Um, uh, what was I going to say? Let's we'll save that for another ranch or something like that. Yeah, right here is pretty good. And what we'll do is we'll run... Yeah, let me rotate a road here. We'll run a road up this way. Although, eh. I don't... That's introducing too many, uh, too many intersections for my taste. The more intersections you have, the more random your walker's paths are. And I don't like that. So you know what? We're going to start a whole new little mini road here, and we're going to have a dedicated uh, dedicated one of these guys just to prevent the town hall from collapsing. Eventually, we'll have more more things um, for uh, for this thing to this guy to protect. But for now, we're just going to use him to keep the town hall going. All right, let's unpause here. So now this town hall is operational here, and now our tax collecting office is going to be springing into action pretty soon. Yep, here comes the tax collector, and I love it, with a little suitcase bottle type jingle paw uh, steam bot following behind him, uh, collect, helping him collect the money. Um, so what he's basically going to do is um, he's going to go around and cover the houses and it's going to say this house's residents will soon pay their taxes. And I believe when the season changes, um, any any house that's been covered by a tax collector will give you money based on that house's size. And then come the next season, he has to make his rounds again to set them back, both back to that. Um, so, all right, so now we've got ourselves a little bit of income. All right, let's... Um, before we do anything else, let's uh, let's speed things up here a little bit. Wait for our crops to finish here. Uh, wheat's going to finish before the barley, which will be good because I'm curious to see if. Uh... Oh no, I was wrong. Oh, the barley just had a sort of a half season here, so we're not going to get a full harvest of the barley, but it's enough. It's enough to get started. Um, so let's get ourselves that abbey. Can we fit the abbey here? No, but we can fit the abbey here. Okay. Um, 
in. Oh, fine. If something collapses, I can replace it. Um, there. Um, yeah, we'll start with just the one brewer. I think next season I'll add a second, um, possibly a third. Um, actually, we might if 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 the uh, if the wheat to meat conversion ratio works out, I might uh, try to apply that to the barley to beer brewers here. But since we only got sort of a partial harvest there, um, then yeah. Now our barley, our, uh, our, our spear, our finished beer has to be stored somewhere, but unfortunately it's not a granary. Uh, beer is, is a non-perishable um, product, so they, they, they're a little bit more picky about where they go. Or rather, they just don't want to go in a granary, I should say. It's not that they're picky. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to wrap the, I'm going to bring this, well, heck, We'll bring this road out here so the migrants can just walk in right there. But we're also going to... Actually, a better idea is we'll run the road back here against the wall. And what I'm going to do is a roadblock right here so we don't lose our walkers from our residential neighborhoods. Um, and then storage warehouse. Uh, okay. Oh, that's a non-destructible tree right there that I can't get rid of. Yeah, fair enough. We'll put you right over here then. And yes, I'm going to need another another dedicated uh, dude to uh, um, keep it from collapsing. I mean, they, 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 they won't collapse immediately if you don't have one of these guys here, but eventually they will. Uh-oh, we got some ghosts. Yeah, so one of the uh, things in this game is there's a lot of supernatural elements. There's fairies, there's ghosts, there's there's a lot of uh, other creatures. And the, and the way the game treats it, like it seems like the people in this world kind of consider these guys just part of the flora and the fauna. So like, oh no, we've got ghosts. It's the same as like, oh no, we've got ants. Um, but we got to do something about the ghosts. They don't like the ghosts. So let's get another service building here, the Exorcist. The Exorcist does, well, exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> they get rid of the ghosts. Um, yeah, we'll put the Exorcist right here. Yeah, one Exorcist should be able to cover the whole block here. Um... I don't know the exact effect of the phantoms, but uh, it's generally not good. All right, so we got the exorcist doing his thing, so he's going to be purging the ghosts here. I don't also don't. I'm also not too sure what exactly spawns the ghosts. Um, there are some tiles around here. I don't know if this map has any of them. Ah, see here, this tomb. Cold, strange wind blows out of it. I don't know if the presence of these are what generate the ghosts. I'm a little fuzzy on that specific uh, aspect of the game. But, uh-oh, we're getting some downgrading. Um, I don't think the lack of the wash house is what's causing these guys to downgrade. Yep, they're going down another level. They ran out of food. That's our, that's, see, I, I told you that that might be a problem. If they ran out of food, so they are just downgrading back down to level two. Because they don't go back to that. Ah, but we just got new food in. They're getting delivery, so they're going right back up. These guys are like, okay, are we going to downgrade? No, we'll just keep the house. And now, see, here, here's the danger you have. Your city needs more workers. Um, when you have this big uh, food short, when you have a, when you have a mass, mass of downgrades, it pulls the rug out from under your workforce. Um, as people uh, leave the city, that leaves a bunch of your jobs that you previously were considering uh, to be, uh, you know, you know, uh, filled without any problems. Uh, and now suddenly you have a labor shortage on your hands. So you can see that there's some, sometimes you can get some cascading problems and some cascading issues. All right, we've got a fair, fair amount of, uh, fair amount of our uh, wheat here. In fact, we, we capped out on that, that 2400. I hope, I hope they didn't throw out any of it. Uh, on account of that limit. Uh, I'm going to put you to 3,000. And you know what? You uh, you go down to 3,000. So we're just going to have you guys split even, even Steven. I don't think they capped out, but I could be wrong. 
But it, at the very least, it's more wheat than was present last year, which is a good thing. Um, now, one of the other things we can do here, since right now all of the meat that we're making is being eaten by our residents, um, and that's not necessarily the most ideal thing, because we need some of this meat for uh, um, uh, for tribute. So we're going to be making a lot more meat. Uh, what are we lacking here? We need 61 more workers. Mm, not the worst thing in the world. As soon as we get another delivery of meat um, and they bring it around to these houses, they'll re-upgrade and we'll get our workforce back. So I don't want to expand out into any more, uh, any more buildings that employ people uh, until they bring that out. Uh, what are you guys doing? Yeah, not working at maximum. Nobody, oh crap, the granary is not being worked. Okay, see this is a problem. This is a problem. This labor shortage is crippling our uh, our thing here. Now thankfully, since we have the town hall, we can uh, influence uh, worker priorities here. So we're going to tell you work priority one for distribution um, above anything else because we want that infrastructure getting staffed. So now, um, yeah, now you people are bringing that stuff into here. There's enough for, for that. Our, um, our shopkeeper is gra grab the meat. They're going to send out uh, distributors here. And actually, it looks like he's going go here to grab some of the beer, too. Uh, that's going to help some of these level four houses turn into level fives. Yes, I know we need more workers. That's where we're working on it. All right. If, um... So, yeah, he's distributing the beer. So these level fours are turning into level fives. Uh, and they want access to a theater, which is thankfully another thing that doesn't depend on goods. So once I get my uh, once I get my workers sorted out here, I'll uh, I'll, I'll uh, get the theater rolling. And you know, with these houses going up to higher levels, and then us repairing these houses back up to their nominal levels, uh, then we should have our workforce back in force and everything back to full employment. Uh, Sterren Hall's mines are producing more copper than usual. They imported there just a higher amount of it. You can now import more copper from Sterren Hall. Yay, copper! Um, well, that's actually useful later down in the game, uh, in the uh, mission. I should uh, should be showing that to you a little bit later, because I think you need that to uh, get to some of the higher tiers here. All right, let's get that. Uh, what's our what's our uh, employment looking at? Yeah. Let's get that theater built, because yeah, they're they're leveling up now, uh, so they'll have enough people to actually employ in the theater, the theater. Stick you right there. As long as a little piece of the building is touching, it's fine. So now that'll send out a walker to uh, start uh, to, uh, giving theater access to people. Um, yeah, these guys are burning through the wheat as fast as they can. Uh, that little hiccup in my uh, in my infrastructure is kind of going to kind of spoil my uh, uh, thing here. And that one, yeah, this thing is going to be soaking up a lot more barley. Um, so we're going to need some more breweries here. In fact, why don't I make two more of those? All right, brewers, it, Abbeys, you you get the idea. Um, yeah, you know what? Let's just make them over here so that they can uh, benefit from uh, benefit from the uh, this guy's uh, uh, coverage because they'll they'll run and get the the barley themselves. In fact, actually, we could just can we uh, no, that's impenetrable forest. That's fine. They'll just take the scenic route to uh, to get their uh, barley deliveries. Uh, Thirteen percent unemployment. Uh, so there's plenty of workers to fill these things. In fact, I might go for another ranch as well, just to up my uh, up my meat production here. Yeah, because here comes here comes all the wheat. Yeah, 
And that's pretty much, yeah, filled up half of it right there, the uh, limit I gave it. So yeah, we'll do the same thing here. Not the most efficient route, but uh, we'll, we'll take it. And we'll put the uh, blocker right here. All right, so these guys are leveled up uh, to level six. Ah, yeah, the utensil, the utensil delivery from a shop. So in order to get utensils, you need copper and then um, something to manufacture in them. But this map doesn't have any copper. This is a farming map. Um, and that's by design. Most of the maps in the game don't have everything that you need. And that's fine. There's plenty you can do to, uh, to, to deal with that. Um, and so I'm going to show you precisely what you can do to deal with that. So I am going to yeah get a little cross thing here. And we're going to build ourselves this, the Trade Center. Oop. Uh, discover Calvin Nemo recently came back from his expedition with huge news. He discovered an enormous island in the midst of the ocean. Many thought that Lethus's east was merely covered by an endless sea. The Blue Island just reminds us in what marvelous times we're living. Your citizens become more content. Yay! I don't actually know what that means um, in terms of like gameplay effects of them being content. Um, but like I said, still learning the game, so uh, I'm sure there is some meaningful thing for it. Okay, so... Ooh, we need more workers to build additional houses. We need more alcohol. Well, that we're working on the more alcohol. So, yeah, here they come. Here comes the alcohol, and then they're going to get upgraded again once the theater walker goes past them. Um, so we should be getting more citizens in very soon. There we go. Perfect. Yeah, you you get a thirsty population going. Um, all right, so we've got three uh, three ranches here. Uh, they're they're chewing through the uh, chewing through that uh, pretty pretty quickly here. Uh, we need four thousand meat, so that actually means we need to be able to store four thousand wheat. Uh, what's our unemployment looking at? Three percent. Yeah, I don't want to go too crazy here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start start up some trade routes. Um, so this is where you can actually buy and sell goods. You can import stuff from other cities in the empire. Uh, and also you can export some of your excess own goods for money. That's the second way that you can get uh, florins in this game is by exporting stuff uh, in addition to the taxes. So let's see what we got here. We've got these guys are selling us fish. So that's another source of food. And they buy meat and bread by the looks of it. Not bad, but... Uh, Actually, the fish is curious, because by importing another type of food, um, we would have people eating something other than the meat, which means we can use the meat for uh, pleasing the emperor. Uh, this one imports potatoes. It's actually cheaper than the fish, and they buy excess wheat and meat. So actually, that's not a bad one either. A lot of people are wanting meat. Uh, you import silk. You buy jewelry and bread, so uh, not, not a good one for us. Um, you, uh, ooh, you, if we have excess, uh, booze, we can sell them our booze. Uh, we don't have excess, excess right now, but if you wanted to go crazy, you can over, overproduce the, uh, the alcohol and then sell it for, for, uh, money. And here, ah, see, now they're selling copper. This, this is what we want. We don't have a way to get copper naturally on the map, so we got to do this. And hey, they sell potatoes too. So with this one map, um... And they buy jewelry, but we're not going to be able to make jewelry. With this one trade route, we can uh, we can we can do what we want. So here's what we're going to do: we're going to import uh, we're going to import copper. Let's do 1,200, then go up to 2,400, and then for potatoes, let's import 1,600. Actually, 1,600 of both is good. So uh, now we're going to have to pay for those imports. So it's going to use up some of our money to uh, to get those goods. But those some of the, those are goods that we could not supply ourselves otherwise. Um, I'm okay with the well. The potatoes are going to get shipped to a granary, um, which means hmm, let's here. Let's do this. We're going to have. 
Let me extend you out. Well, I'm gonna probably get another uh, get a, get another uh, um, engineer here because we're starting to get more buildings, and it's not so much how many buildings the engineer um, uh, upkeeps is his limit. It's it's um, how much how how much space he has to travel. Which reminds me, I don't want that right there because that's going to be an intersection that can mess with his travel. Um, all right, so let's get another granary. Although another granary is going to use up a lot of people. Eh, we could, we should be able to absorb it. Um, and we need a place for this stuff to go anyway. All right, you uh, will refuse everything except for potatoes, which we will cap at. Uh, that and we'll have you uh, also accept meat. So between we'll have two different granaries that can accept meat. All right. Yeah, I might need another ranch too. We are not burning through this wheat. They we still have stockpile of wheat here. Um. Oh, Eric! Here comes one of our importers. They come in by hot air balloon, even though we're buying, like, tons of potatoes and copper. Nope, they fly it right in. Laws of, uh, laws of, uh, uh, gravity be damned. All right, so here comes all that copper we bought. Um, and they're just going to dump it off here at the warehouse. That's fine. Uh, but we got to do something with that copper, because raw copper do not utensils make. Um, we need to actually build a utensil factory, which we can do right here. Um, in fact, let's, let's do two of them to make sure we have a, a constant supply. Uh, five more workers needed, that's fine. Um, yeah, that's fine. What are your... is not pretty enough, eh? Alright, well, let's, let's get some, uh, let's get a little fountain going here. Yeah, there's, there's some not negative stuff, so let's get a big fountain here. There we go. So what uh, you guys are all asking for utensils, yeah. So once these utensils uh, get going here, um, then uh, then these people are uh, then we'll get our next round of upgrades, uh, which will bring in even more residents, and that should get us to the twelve hundred mark. Although these guys are level six, so we're gonna have to do one more upgrade after that. Yep, here come the utensils, and the utensils get distributed exactly the same way as all the other things. Right, here comes another. Uh, here comes another shipment. This is probably going to be our potatoes. And uh, how much meat do we have? Well, we're we've maxed out this thing here. So maybe another ranch is uh, not one, two, three, four, five, six to three ranches, and they're chewing through that pretty well, actually. So maybe I, maybe this is a good healthy ratio: two farms to one ranch. Um, and as far as booze goes, one, two, three, four, five, let's get one more, well, let's wait for our workers here. Uh-oh, what's this? The capital is in need of silk. The Emperor Wilhelm IV uh, depends 1,000 units of silk to be delivered in 360 days. And we don't have any silk. Well, that's kind of crappy, um, because right now we have no need for silk. That's that the actual use for silk. I mean, there is a use for silk in the game, but not for this town. This town, this town could care less about silk. Uh, but the emperor wants us to give it to him. Even, and now we can make it uh, naturally, but that um, it requires us to use barley. Um, the other thing we could do is import it and then give it to the emperor that way. Um, who? Some somebody was selling silk. Who's selling silk? You sell silk. It's kind of expensive though. And you don't buy anything interesting. Does anybody else sell silk? I don't think they do. So yeah, we could buy the silk ourselves and then import it, or we can. Uh, um, uh, or we can do that, or we could just ignore the emperor. Um, now I have not experienced the uh, the what the uh, what the game will do to you if you ignore the emperor too much. I know it's not like if you miss one, it's not game over just from missing one. But uh, uh, if you uh, if you do too much of it, I believe there are some negative ramifications to that. What they are, I don't know. But let's try to produce it in house. Um, so although we are tearing, yeah, we tore through all the barley. 
but just barely because here's a fresh shipment of barley so we just emptied that out so i think one more barley farm will will do and then if we expand our silk operations now that's not going to be in time all right here comes the utensils so we're getting level seven here houses need medicine from the herbalist so we need an, yet another good to uh, keep these people happy um now the herbalist is not just a simple you know plop a building and spawn a walker and be done with it um they the herbalist is a two-part uh, affair we actually need a greenhouse to grow the herbs and then an herbalist to actually distribute them um luckily the greenhouse is pretty pretty easy to handle um because it you don't even need the fertile land because it's sort of like a hydroponic style farm um so we're just gonna plop one here how's our uh four more well minus four minutes i think it's just because the people are transitioning here yet yeah, here comes the barley you know what since we have uh since we have this stuff i think i'm gonna import that silk um so let's open up a trade route because we've got money to burn here uh, and I don't want to. I don't want to use my barley crop for um, for producing silk. Now you might be saying, Pinstar, how how do you convert barley into silk? Um, the building that does it is very unique. Uh, I will say it at that. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave you a teaser. I'm not gonna show you the building, but it's it's evident of the fact that the creatures of this realm are very different than the creatures of our realm, uh, and it's actually kind of funny. But again, I'm gonna leave it uh, leave it as a teaser for you um yeah so they need the herbalist so those that will start making herbs uh and then the herbalist uh, is right there you can put you right here now they're not going to spawn a walker until they actually get a supply of herbs but that's fine now we are making more beer than we uh than we are drinking so you know what we can do is um all right nobody buys beer right now uh, so we could open up another trade route here to find... I know somebody was buying beer. Who wanted to buy... You buy the beer. So let's open you up. And let's uh, let's start selling some of our beer. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, 1200 a year. We don't want to sell all of our beer because we still got to drink some of it ourselves. Crisis uh, at Hasselport. This uh, Hasselport steam condenser exploded, which led to severe terraforming of its river delta to a deluge mini flea. They need to urgently repair the city, restore the fishing region's economy. Um, was that the one I just... Uh... No, no. That was the ones that uh, sold that. So um, so that's that wasn't one of the trade routes I was using, thankfully. All right, here comes uh, here comes the, the the greenhouse person with some of the herbs, so that works out nicely here. And here comes our supplier uh, upgrading this round of houses, so that should give us plenty of stuff. Uh, next importer should be bringing us some uh, some more silk. How much uh, how much booze do we have? Yeah, twelve fourteen hundred in stock right now. Um, that's that's fine right there, because uh, we're going to be selling twelve hundred of it um next uh, come next shipment and that should give us some money and yeah yeah so um level eight here comes our here comes the level eight um the herbalist is doing their rounds so they're going up to level eights which is awesome we gotta get more people at, as level eights what's this what's your problem here utensil all right so you ran out of utensils uh, well, we are making utensils pretty feverishly, so you should be getting your delivery soon. What's your problem? Not pretty enough. All right, well, we can fix that. We can fix that. How about, uh, let's do a bigger fountain for you. Boom. I bet you you're complaining about the same thing. Yep. See, there's there's some imperfections in this build. Um, so it's not perfect. So don't take this as the strategy and tactics uh, uh, side of things. Okay, we've got uh, we've got that thing. We just gotta pay tribute. Oh, we had enough meat. Sweet, we win. Well, just this first scenario. Um, so this was yeah, like I said, that it is a 26 scenario campaign uh, plus the tutorials plus a sandbox mode that you can uh, go with. It's more of an open freeform game. 
Uh, so a lot of replayability in here, and this was, again, just scratching the surface. This is not the extent of the game's economy. Uh, lots more to be done, lots more to balance and manage and what have you. Um, so let me know in the comments if you want to see a full strategy and tactics series out of this or not. Um, so until uh, next time, this has been Pinstar, signing out. See ya!